Hey there, card folk. Speed Robo here. In today's episode of Exploring Card Game Design, we will be talking about a future card buddy fight fan card created by my friend the DBR over on Ace of Spades Games. The reason we are talking about this card today is that it is a straightforward card for an easy to understand archetype. And it showcases three very good design principles for card design. This is an example that will be easy to follow, even for viewers who are not familiar with the game Future Card Buddy Fight. Without further ado, here is the card. Ariel Maiden Bishop is a size 1 monster with the following effect. When she enters the field, you will mill the top two cards of your deck. If there is a chess among the cards milled, this card gains Shadow Dive and Double Attack. The first thing I want to talk about regarding this card is the multi-deck use card design. In future card Buddy Fight, generic cards may be used with most flags in the game, allowing them to be put in any deck. For Hearthstone players, this would be like the neutral cards in Hearthstone. Chess is Bishop's given archetype, so if she is being splashed into another deck, it is safe to assume that she will not be milling a chess and giving herself Shadow Dive and Double Attack most of the times. Therefore, we can assume that this monster is simply on play, mill 2. Is this a good effect? In general, for the modern game of Buddy Fight, yes. Having a bunch of cards in your drop zone is usually a good thing. Therefore, it is fully possible that this card may be splashed in decks, either as a budget option or in very specific decks that need to mill a lot of cards very quickly. However, it is not a very powerful option when used in this sense, and that's a good thing. If cards that can be used in any deck become very powerful, they will be used in every deck. And this can cause problems for each player type. If a generic card is too powerful, casual players will see it every single time. It will reduce deck variety, and that isn't very entertaining. For collectors, if every single player needs this card in every single deck, it will be very hard or very expensive to acquire foils or alternate arts of the card, thus making it hard for collectors to complete their collection. For competitive players, it will mean that they will have to use this card in every single deck, thus raising the overall price of every deck, as if this card is hard to obtain, yet still necessary, it will be expensive. Therefore, Aerial Maiden Bishop is an excellent example of how to design generic support. Is it good? Yes. Is it usable? Yes. Does it overshadow archetype-specific options? No. Excellent example of how to design support for every deck. Next, moving on into how it supports its own archetype's core strategy. Here is the main card and win condition for the chess archetype. It's called Checkmate. It is an alternate win condition that can be activated if you have no monster in your center, if you have a standing chess on your field, and if you have five or more chess in your drop zone, and if your opponent's life is four or less. You attack with the standing chess, and if the attack is successful, you win the game. The core boss monster for chess is called Keen the Dominator Endgame. When it enters the field, it automatically sets the opponent's life to four if there are five or more chess in the drop zone. These two cards together make checkmate reasonably easy to pull off. So, how does Bishop accommodate this strategy? Simply put, she increases the number of mill options in the deck, which is very good 
speeding up the number of chests you have in the drop zone, allowing you to activate checkmate earlier and easier. In addition, in the game of Buddy Fight, if your opponent has a monster in the center position, you cannot attack their life points directly. This means that if you play Keen the Dominator endgame, set their life to 4, and attempt to cast Checkmate, if your opponent has a monster in the center, it will fail. Bishop's Shadow Dive ability allows her to attack the opponent directly, even if they have a monster in the center. This is an excellent ability for the chess archetype. However, there is a problem. You may only have a total of size 3 on your field in Buddy Fight, Keen is a size 3, and Bishop is a size 1. This is totally fine, as it helps balance out Bishop and still gives the deck an alternate option to close out the game if the opponent is playing defensively. Overall, absolutely fantastic support without completely breaking the deck. Great job on the sizing for this monster. Now let's talk about the third thing Bishop does very well, and that is grant support to cards unused in the archetype, namely Chess Magic. Chess Magic is a spell card that allows you to move a monster on your opponent's field into the center. Normally, this card would never be played in a chess deck, as you want your opponent's center to not have a monster on it to attack with checkmate and win the game. However, Bishop's Shadow Dive ability makes this card actually usable now. Closing out your opponent's center generally prevents some of their defensive spells from working. Couple that with Bishop's Shadow Dive, and you have an excellent strategy to win the game with Checkmate. Once again, fantastic job. One last thing I want to point out in regards to Bishop is the fact that she gets double attack. Keen the Dominator Endgame grants double attack to all chess, so this seems redundant. But keep in mind the sizing issues with Keen the Dominator Endgame and Bishop. By granting Bishop double attack, you keep the chess overall archetypal theme of granting double attack to its monsters while not needing Keen the Dominator Endgame and Bishop on the field at the same time, which is impossible. Once again, excellent theming for Ariel Maiden Bishop. To review the three key points that Ariel Maiden Bishop demonstrates in card design is 1. Designing generic support to be useful but not overpowering. 2. Granting excellent support for forwarding an archetype's core win condition. And 3. Simultaneously giving the chance for unplayed cards within an archetype to see main deck play for that archetype. I hope you have learned something new about card design from watching this video. If you have, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. In addition, if there are any other cards you would like me to take a look at and review, or any games you would like me to shine a spotlight on in a future episode of Exploring Card Game Design, let me know. I've been Speed Robo, and I'll see you later.